We are continuing our mini mad lads of the furry variety. You know, the cute and lovable kind, not the line up against the wall kind. And we simply could not do animal mini mad lads without at least one good boy. A very good boy. Some might even say the goodest boy. Rags. But before we get into the mini mad lad, it's your boy, Raid Shadow Legends. The hottest game on the Play Store with over 400 champions for you to collect and 16 different factions. Orcs, Dwarves, Undead Hordes, but my favourite is the Orcs, who travel the world just finding people to beat the absolute crap out of and also eat. Right now I'm running the epic champion Shaman who is overpowered because you can spam buffs on your own team while spamming debuffs on the enemy team and right now I'm just abusing how overpowered she is. I'm also running Gormask for no other reason than he's a great big hellhound and he looks like he eats bears. You can compete against the raid community in the spider's den, ice golem's peak, the almighty fire knight or the notorious dragon and win rare artifacts and other rewards. So click my link down below and if you are a new player you will get 100,000 silver and a free champion, Hexweaver, who is really overpowered and good for new players. These rewards are only available for new players and only for the next 30 days. And you can find all of these rewards here in your inbox. Rags was an orphaned stray puppy living on the streets of Paris during World War I when he was discovered in the street by Private James Donovan who was serving in the Signal Corps with the American 1st Infantry Division. The reason that Rags got his name is when Private Donovan first laid eyes on him lying in the street, Donovan thought it was just a pile of rags until the pile of rags got up and looked at him and that's when Donovan realised that it's not a pile of rags, it is in fact a good boy. Donovan took rags from the street, washed him, fed him and got him all cleaned up. The problem was this made Donovan late in reporting back to his unit where he would have got into serious trouble and been marked as absent without leave, which is a pretty serious offence. So when he reported back to his unit, he brought rags with him and when his superiors asked him where the hell have you been, he told the superiors that rags was the first division mascot and he ran away and Private James Donovan was part of the search party that had to go out and find him. The superiors sort of went, I, I, I had no idea that we had a mascot, but we, good, good work, soldier. Good work. Fall in. The reason they didn't know is because First Division did not have a mascot. Private James Donovan made the entire thing up, A, so he wouldn't get into trouble, and B, so he had a good excuse to keep rags, and just like that, Rags really did become the mascot of First Division. That little stunt that Donovan pulled is something that other soldiers in First Division would also repeat themselves. You know, if any of the soldiers wanted to sneak off into the nearest town for a little bit of R&R, you know, drinking themselves silly and experiencing the French ladies of the night, you know, the, the, ones, with the, the ones with the tiggle bitties, they would actually bring Rags with them. So that when they reported back to base and their superiors asked them, where the fuck have you been? They had a fantastic excuse. Uh, no, I was not in town getting drunk and having sex with prostitutes, right? Rags ran away and I had to go and try and find him, right? I was not burying my face in some massive big old French titties, right? The only thing I was doing was my duty. And quite frankly, I don't care for the accusation. Rags immediately became very popular with all the soldiers of First Division. Because he's a dog. And everybody likes dogs. Anyone who doesn't like dogs is Satan. Donovan was the appointed carer and guardian of Rags. 
But Donovan was being deployed to the front line, which meant that Rags had to go with him. Donovan's duties on the front line was to string communication wire between the advancing military and the rear supporting artillery units so that they could communicate with each other and call in fire support, like we spoke about in the last video. Donovan's job was also to repair any telephone wires that had been damaged during bombardments. And if there were no wires for communication, then units would have to send out runners carrying the messages and, like we spoke about in the last video, Runners almost always got killed. Out of all the types of different soldiers you had in World War I, runners had the shortest life expectancy. The dangers in being a runner wasn't just in getting picked off by a German sniper. There was dangerous terrain, there was barbed wire fucking everywhere that you could get tangled and trapped in, and there was also massive craters in the ground that had been created by bombardments which very often would fill up with rainwater and sometimes the runners would accidentally fall into these and because of the loose soil at the side they couldn't climb out and they would end up just drowning in the rainwater. Being a runner was a really fucking shit job. That's why Donovan had the idea to just use rags by attaching messages to his collar. Because rags was a terrier mix he was very small, which meant it was very hard for the Germans to spot him, and Rags could also fit through small gaps like in barbed wire, so he could access parts of the battlefield that other soldiers simply couldn't get to. Or, well, at least die trying to get to. And because he was a small dog, he was really, really quick, so he could actually deliver the messages pretty fast, and because of his speed, and because of his size, the Germans just never spotted him. In July of 1918, Donovan and another 42 men were completely surrounded by German forces and taken very heavy fire. They needed artillery support, but they knew that instant a runner poked his head out the trench, he would just be picked off right away by a German sniper. So Donovan very reluctantly attached a message to Rag's collar, given the coordinates of a much-needed artillery bombardment so Donovan and the rest of the men could withdraw safely. The problem was they were completely on all sides surrounded, which meant there was a very high chance of Rags being spotted and shot by a German sniper. But Rags managed to slip by the Germans completely undetected and got the message back to artillery support who provided the necessary barrage for other divisions to come in and rescue Donovan and the rest of the men. Now that, that is a fucking good boy. Rags very many times delivered many messages that resulted in many lives being saved. The soldiers of 1st Division absolutely loved this dog. He was a hero to them. One little thing that I do feel is uh, worthy of a mention is Private James Donovan taught Rags how to salute. There was no two-year trial, criminal record, or £800 fine, though. Everyone just thought it was quite cute. Rags also served as an early warning system for the soldiers. You see, whenever a bombardment had started, all the soldiers would drop to the ground, cover their heads, assume the position, take cover. And Rags had learned to copy the soldiers whenever they did this. Rags would lie down flat on the ground and sort of cover his face with his little paws. And the soldiers realised after a while that Rags would sometimes do that, even if no bombardment was happening. But there was a reason for it. Rags is a dog, and dogs have very good hearing. And the reason Rags was doing that is because he could hear the shells coming before the soldiers could, and he was bracing himself already. So the soldiers learned that if they saw Rags doing that, take cover. Here come the bombs. Unfortunately, in October of 1918, Rags in Private Donovan's position took a direct hit from an artillery barrage and a gas attack at the same time. Rags and Donovan were seriously injured from breathing in the gas and they also were seriously injured from shrapnel from the shelling. Rags himself suffered shrapnel wounds to his front paw, one of his ears, and he also lost an eye. Both Private Donovan and Rags were evacuated back to a field hospital to undergo emergency medical treatment. 
At which point, a bunch of soldiers stood up and took offence to the fact that a dog was getting emergency medical treatment and they were asking questions about what's so special about this dog? Why is he getting medical treatment? At which point, all of the 1st Division boys would stand up and say to them, orders from headquarters, which was a nice way of saying, shut the fuck up or we'll kick your head in. Don't talk shit about Rags in front of 1st Division. Rags managed to fully recover, but Donovan's injuries from breathing and all that gas were too severe, so he was relieved from duty due to his injuries and he was to be sent back to the United States for further medical treatment. The problem was the ship that Donovan was supposed to be going back home on had a complete ban on any animals being brought aboard. So all the boys from 1st Division managed to do a series of distractions and clever ruses to smuggle rags on board the ship with Donovan to make sure that both of them could go back to the United States together. Private Donovan was kept in Fort Sheridan Base Hospital for further treatment and rags was adopted by the base itself and he was taken care of by the staff and the rest of the soldiers who would also bring rags to Donovan in the hospital for regular visits. The base also had a special collar made for rags which read Rags, First Division. Rags also attended a lot of military parades and ceremonies, like the retreat ceremony. And apparently, while the bugle was playing and the flag was being lowered, Rags could be seen saluting with the rest of the soldiers. Unfortunately, the injuries that Private James Donovan had suffered during the gas attack were too severe, and he couldn't recover from them. And in 1919, he passed away. And it's rumoured that while Rags was at Donovan's funeral, while the taps was playing, Rags could be seen saluting his fallen friend. (coughs) Hay fever's playing up. In 1920, Major Raymond Hardenberg was stationed in Fort Sheridan, and he brought his family, including his young children, along with him. And his young children immediately fell in love with Rags. They were always feeding him, playing with him, taking care of him. They got really, really attached to Rags. They fell in love with him. So the post commander of Fort Sheridan gave Major Hardenberg and his family permission to adopt Rags. Hardenberg ended up being stationed at many different military bases, and he would always bring his family and Rags with him. And whenever he arrived at a new base, Rags had a little ritual that he would do. Now, military bases usually have several different mess halls. And what Rags would do is he would go around trying each mess hall. And what Rags was doing was he was judging the quality of the food as well as the generosity of the staff and patrons of that mess hall. Once Rags found the mess hall that had the best food and the most generous staff and patrons, Rags would choose that as his mess hall and that would be the only one that he would go to and any mess hall that had the great honour of being chosen by Rags was given his bowl so that they could feed him when he came around. Rags was quite a celebrity at this point. A bunch of newspapers had written a bunch of articles on him. He had marched down Broadway with the rest of 1st Division during the World War I 10th anniversary march. And he also had his picture taken with a bunch of different politicians and army generals. Rags eventually was living at the Hardenberg family home in Silver Spring, Maryland. And in 1936, Hardenberg had to deliver the bad news to everyone in 1st Division. Rags had passed away at the age of 20 years old. Rags was buried with military honours and a monument to him was erected in Aspen Hill Memorial Park. And what their story teaches us is that dogs are the finest creatures to have ever graced this earth. Thank you for your service. What a good boy. It's Count Dankula on YouTube. Everybody should subscribe. (laughs) Yeah.